Hey, this is Jesse Tula for BatchFrame.com, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to create custom shatter maps for the shatter effect. Now right here, we just have a red solid with the shatter effect applied, and these are all just the default settings. And you can see that the shatter effect is creating this brick pattern and shattering the solid into it. And if you've ever played around with this effect, you know that in the Shape tab, there's other patterns to choose from. And there are a lot of them, but they might not always work for what you're trying to do. And that's what we're going to talk about here. What if you wanted to create a shatter from your own design, or from a logo, or from something like that? How do you do it? So to get started, I just want to show you the wireframe view for the shatter. If we go scroll back to the beginning, we can see that we have this mesh glass breaking look. Now this is not the shatter map. The shatter map is creating this wireframe. So when you're creating your shatter map, it's not going to be white lines with a black background. What we have to do is create a different color for each piece we need to shatter, and then this kind of map will be created. And to explain this, I'm going to go into a comp I've already created. And you can see here, here's the wireframe we want to create. Four separate pieces that shatter apart from each other. But like I said, this is not the shatter map. The shatter map looks something like this four separate and solid colors that come together where we want the shatter to take place. So you can see we have these four different sections. This and this is where the shatter will take place, which will create this wireframe. And to show you that happening, I'm going to go back to my demo comp and drop in the shatter map. If we look at this, I'm going to go back in here and turn those layers back on. So here's our shatter map. In the layer, we can turn this off because we don't need to see it. And in the red solid, I'm going to go to the effects, and from the pattern, I'm going to choose custom. And the custom shatter layer, I need to choose simple map. And now you can see this wireframe has been created. And if I go into my rendered view and scrub through, you can see our layer now shatters into those four separate pieces. So that's how you create a shatter map. It's really simple to do. Now you may see up here we have this black line, and that's because if there's parts of the shatter map that don't have any color, just blackness, we're going to have those spaces. And you can see that there was a little bit of space here. If I make it bigger, you can see that that part is gone. So any area in our shatter map that's black is going to have nothing when we apply the shatter. And I'll just scoot this over so it's overlapping. And now we can see we have no black space. And our shatter happens exactly as we would expect. So that's how you create a shatter map. It's very simple. All you have to do is create a different color for each piece of the shatter and put it into a single frame and use that as your shatter map. So I'm going to show you some other things you can do. Um, I'm going to start a new composition. And we'll just call this complex map. And I'm just going to create a new solid. Doesn't matter what color. And I'm going to put fractal noise onto this solid. And we'll leave it as is. And I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And onto this, I'm going to put colorama. And you'll see why I put it onto a separate layer a little bit later. OK, so you see we, that we have a lot of different colors in our composition now. But I want to create a little bit more separation. And to do that, I'm going to go back to our yellow solid and play with the contrast of the fractal noise. You can see now we have a little bit more color in our composition. So let's see what happens when we use this as our shatter map. Go back to the demo layer, delete this simple map, and we'll drop in our complex map. And in the effects for this red solid, we'll change our custom shatter map to complex map. And if we scrub through this now, oops, let me turn this layer off you can see that our red solid is now shattering into that crazy fractal noise pattern. So I'm sure right away you can see that you can create really unique shatters with this. And keep in mind that I'm going to be using just After Effects to create these shatter maps, just to keep it simple. But you can go into Photoshop or another similar program and create your own shatter maps in there, just using separate colors, and then import those into After Effects. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I do want to show you a couple more things. So we have this crazy shatter map and I think it's a little bit too complex for this tutorial just because the more complex your shatter map is the slower the render so I'm just going to simplify this a little bit and I'll just bring down the contrast again and so it's a little bit faster and you can see how that looks now let's say you're doing this for a company and you wanted the effect to shatter around their logo you wanted everything to shatter except for the logo what you want to do is I'm going to go back to our complex map and I'm going to drop in the batch frame logo. It's in my vector. 
Now you can see I have this labeled vectors. You don't necessarily have to have a vector, but it will make it easier later on. So I'm just going to drag this in on top of my adjustment layer. And I will scale this up. And I'm going to turn on collapse transformation so we have nice sharp edges. Now, right now, if we use this, since we do have all of these solid colors, everything would shatter. And if I go back to our demo, you can see that the batch frame logo is in there and it's shattering with the rest of the pieces. But that's not what we want. We want the batch frame logo to stay still and have all of the rest of the pieces shatter around it. So we'll go back to our comp. And to do this, we're going to have to make this entire batch frame logo pure white. And you'll see why. So what I'm going to do is just go to Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And I'm going to change both the black and white to white. And now our batch frame logo is white. And if I go back to our demo, right away, everything is still happening exactly the same. But you'll see that there's this option, White Tiles Fixed. And if we check this, everything that's pure white now stays still. Now we do have this area around the edges that hasn't been shattered and to fix that I'm going to go into our force tab and I'm going to increase the radius just to one just so that it's larger than the comp and we'll know it will shatter the entire solid. So if we scrub through now you can see that everything shatters around the logo but the logo itself stays still. So whatever we have in our shatter map that's pure white is going to stay intact after the shatter. So I just want to show you one more thing you can do that's pretty interesting. And you can see that right now we have just our shatter happening from our fractal noise. But what if we wanted to use our own shape? And that's what I'll show you how to do now. I'm going to go into the project and drop in my logo only, which is just this area. And I'm going to drop this below the adjustment layer. And that's so the colorama effect is applied to all the pieces that I'm going to be creating. And I'm not going to have to duplicate the uh, effect. So let me just scale this up. And I'll just put that same tint effect on. And you can see now that we have this red color. And the problem is that if I duplicate this layer, we have a second logo that's the exact same color. And if we wanted to overlap our shapes like this, these two pieces would shatter as one object. And if I go back to our demo layer, we can see that happening. Our shatter right here, those two layers are connected. Now there's a simple way to fix that, which is just to go into the tint effect and change each one to a separate color. But there's also a much faster way to do that, and that's to use an expression on the color effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my first shape, and I'm going to apply another tint effect to it. And that's so we just have to use this one control instead of having to control both the black and the white. Because this layer is already white, we only have to use the map white to control. So I'm going to alt click on this to bring up the expression. And this control is going to expect four parameters, and we're just going to put random on all of them, because we just want it to be a random color that's different from all the other colors. So I'm going to type my opening and closing braces. Um, those are square braces, not curly brackets. And inside of that, I'm going to type in a random, and opening and closing parentheses. And then a comma to separate the randoms. So I'm just going to copy what I just wrote, not the brackets, just the word random and the comma. And we'll copy that, go to the end after the comma, and paste it. And I accidentally copied the bracket at the beginning. Okay, so we just want to paste it. So we have four total, and we want to delete the last comma. And now, if we click off, we have this random color. And if I duplicate this layer, you can see that right away it's a new color. And if I continue to duplicate, we continue to get these random colors. Now the reason they seem somewhat similar is because of the colorama effect we have. If we turn this off, you can see that these are all completely different colors. So I'm just going to move these around randomly. Okay, and we'll turn our colorama back on. Now, as I said, these colors are very similar because of the way the output cycle is set in the colorama effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our colorama effect and go to the output cycle. And you can see that all these similar colors are happening around the blue-green range. So what I'm going to do is go in here and just add some colors that aren't similar to blue or green. 
and add them in between. And you can see that right away we're getting a little bit more separation. And if you just play around with it a little bit, you can get some really good separation throughout your entire composition. Now right now this looks like a big mess, but you can see our shatter looks exactly how you'd expect. All of these separate colors in our map are becoming separate pieces in the shatter. And just to see this, we're going to go into our wireframe view. And if we go back to the beginning, you can see our shatter map. All these little pieces from the fractal in the back and then all the bigger pieces from the logos we created and as we shattered through the pure white the main logo is still staying there so that's really it for how to create custom shatter maps it's very simple to do it's just a matter of creating an image that has lots of separate colors or not too many separate colors depending on the map you're trying to create but it's just about creating separate solid colors in the pattern that you want your shatter to happen not too tough uh, so just to finish this off, I'm going to create a nice gradient shatter. And to do that, I'm going to create a new composition. And I'll just put a new layer in there. Create a ramp. And I'll make this a radial ramp. And I'm going to switch the order that these are in. We want the white to be in the center and the black to be on the outside. And that's because I want my shatter to happen from the inside out. And the way the shatter effect works when you use a gradient layer is shatters the white first and the black last. And you'll see what I mean. So I have this gradient map now and I'm going to go back into my demo layer and I'm going to drop in that new gradient. So here, drop it on the bottom and like the shatter map we don't need to see this. Now if I go into my shatter layer and into the effects I'll turn this back to rendered. And we'll close up the Shape tab and the Force tab, and we're going to go down to the Gradient tab. And you can see we have this Gradient Threshold Percent, which right now does nothing. And that's because we don't have our Gradient layer selected. And if we go into this and choose our Gradient, and we scrub through, you can see that nothing's happening. And that's because of this 0%. But if we animate this, or we increase this, you can see that the shatter is now taking place depending on our gradient and where our percentage is set. And if we animate this along our timeline, starting with zero, I'll, I'm at the beginning, I'm going to make a keyframe, I'll scrub through a couple seconds, set another keyframe at 100%, and we'll just increase the size of this, and I'm going to render this. And you can see that this is now shattering from the inside out, and that's because of that white to black gradient we created. So it's a pretty neat effect, and you can do a lot with this. And one thing to remember is that this is a 3D effect, which means that if we change our camera system to Comp Camera and add a camera to our scene, that we can now move around the shatter in 3D space. And you can see how that looks. So I hope that you'll play around with Shatter. I hope that you use the custom Shatter maps because you can create a lot of unique effects with this. Um, there's tons of possibilities. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful, and I hope that you'll check back often for a new tutorial and new content on the site. Uh, once again, I'm Jesse Tula for BatchFrame.com. Thanks for watching.